I'm Rajiv Ram. I'm a professor in electrical engineering here at MIT, and I'm also a associate director for the research lab for electronics. What I'm interested in is basically really using physics to be able to invent new devices. And the kind of physics I feel like I have, I have a good understanding of is, is the physics of light and how that interacts with materials like semiconductors. And so we basically put that, uh, th those two things together to be able to make devices where, you, you know, small miniaturized systems that it can actually, anywhere you see light might be useful. I think one way that we try to work on real problems is we try to, we try to always start from looking at a system need. So, you know, the, you know people talk about like the way that you start with design is you, you identify needs. And so if we're going to work on the design of a new chip to basically help the pharmaceutical industry, well, that's got to start from really understanding, like, how does, a pharma, how, how does a new, how is a new drug made? You know, what exactly is done? And then where are the big, where are the big gaps in, in developing those processes? In an engineer, the, your, key, your key goal is to basically design something. So I think that's what differentiates science and engineering, is engineering is really about design whereas science is really about discovery. And so what I like about basically, I mean, our group really tries to put the two of those things together, where what we do is we, you know, we investigate new phenomena, but we investigate them for the service of a design. You know, we're trying to, we're trying to make something new, and that's the reason we'll basically do physics, not for the sake of just pure discovery. The trick is that when you're actually trying to invent a device for service of a system, you almost always need to know a lot of different things. You need to draw from lots of different disciplines. So for example, in our case, where we're working on photonics to go into microprocessors. We work with computer science groups that think about architecture and algorithms, about groups that actually have much greater expertise in thinking about circuits, and, and groups that actually work, have developed processes that go in, you know, that develop materials and processes that, that go into today's microprocessors, state-of-the-art microprocessors. And so we basically work with all of those groups to figure out like what, what, how can we draw from all of their disciplines and how can we add something new to basically put light into a microprocessor. And that ends up being true for any of the systems that we work on. The thing that gets me excited about doing science is what I'm really trying to convey to the students. You know, if, I, if I'm teaching an undergraduate class on science or some technique in engineering, I can draw from the kind of research problems that we're basically trying to address as motivation. And so, you know, if I can basically say, you know, here's an example of um, an Intel microprocessor, and here's what we're trying to do to improve this technology in the next 10 or 20 years. And I use that as a, as a motivational tool <laughs> to say, and this is why you need to learn these things. That, I think, ends up really conveying some of the excitement, and it gives currency to what you're learning. The thing that ties all the students who, who enter my group is basically some sense of, some element of fearlessness. <laughs> Well, they can't be afraid to take on a project that just looks huge. And my role is basically to help provide, is help train the students and provide them guidance in term, you know, basically give them process, give them some ex background experience, and then help teach them what they need to know to solve their problems. But other than that, it's really the students who, are, who make everything work. The environment of RLE and MIT is, I mean, that, it's got the right flavor where it supports the intellectual freedom. It supports the teaching mission. But the other, or the other thing that RLE does is it actually is, it provides an environment. It's an environment, right? It's an environment of really top, top researchers. So I mean, if you look across MIT, some of the best scientists in the institute are here in RLE. And so you look, you look at the depth and the breadth of researchers in RLE. And I think what it does is it gives you. It helps you set the bar for yourself and your students about what you'd like to accomplish, and it gives you an environment that's really that's supportive of technical excellence. Right? It makes you, it makes it so you're in a place where what really matters is to basically do something great. Even though we're a group that spends a lot of time working on f physics, that our focus on systems means that we are really committed to translating those into real solutions, and I think. It, Understanding that it's possible to, at the same time, have a very deep understanding of physical phenomena like quantum mechanics, solid state physics, electromagnetism, and at, at the same time be working on, on real solutions, I think is important for people to understand it's possible. And there, there, there are maybe a dozen research groups on campus that are able to that embody that spirit. 
And I think it's an important thing for someone to know about our group. In terms of the research that we do, success means being able to demonstrate that a use that you've solved a problem in a system, that you've basically been able to you've been able to invent something that when inserted in a system makes that system better. So you've been able to make a new device that when you put it in a in a fiber to the home deployment that someone has actually makes the broadband service better. That you basically invent something that when you actually deploy it in the developing world actually make, improves people's quality of life because it actually gives them access to low-cost electricity. So I feel like those that's what success means for the research that we do. You know, I think my primary job at MIT is actually not as a researcher. I feel like is really as an educator. My primary product is my graduate students. I feel like if my grad students go on and they feel like they've really learned a lot and they're ready to launch their own careers doing independent research or you know, start up a company or work in a, in a bigger company but really are able to drive innovation in that company, I feel like that's a good measure of success for me. The problems that, the, the problems that we're tackling now in the group, I feel like are of, of a scope where when we solve them, they will really matter. I mean, they'll be the kinds of things that I can explain to my kids and they'll be, they'll be proud of what we did. I think what we need to make sure, what we need to guarantee, maybe as a society we need to guarantee, is sort of the commitment from you know, the, the federal initiatives, like a national commitment to basically making these things happen. Really appreciating that these scientists are really are working on things that are really going to make society better, the world a better place.